I doubt there's a mom out there who hasn't wished for more hours in the day or another day in the week. Time is certainly our limiting factor, followed closely by our energy. We want to make the most of the time that we have, and that's a good desire. But how do we do that without burning out? It's a question we all ask at some point, but it turns out there's an answer to the question. Hi, I'm Misty Winkler, homemaker and homeschool mom and author of the book, Simplified Organization, Learn to Love What Must Be Done. In my book, I give you six steps to take toward skillful homemaking so that we can find joy and satisfaction in the work that God has given us to do. You've landed right in the middle of my series on these six steps. Today we have step four, but you don't want to miss the previous ones or the upcoming ones. So let's get to step four, which is invest your time wisely. If we feel like we're fighting time, then we aren't operating in gratitude and joy like Christian women should. God created time and he placed us in it. Before God even created man, he designed hours, days, weeks, and years. Time existed before man fell into sin. God lives in eternity outside of time, but he made time for man to live in. In the beginning, he called this arrangement very good. So from the outset of our own time management struggles, we have to acknowledge that fact and determine how we can imitate God and follow his pattern for using our time. Time itself is good. We are finite, meant to operate within the bounds of time. While we are on this earth, we should not desire to be outside of time like God. God created time and he gave us work to do in that time. Time for us to sleep, time for us to join together in worship and rest. God is the one who invented the week and designed us to work within it. When we think about how best to use our time, we should think about properly ordering our week and not just our day to day. God himself gave us a reset button for our time and responsibilities. For six days, he says, go, go, go. And then one day he says, stop, enjoy. The next day, we're back at it for another round, refreshed and prepared to run in the good works that God has prepared for us to run in. A weekly review is one tactic we can use to harness our week and operate within it wisely and well. A weekly review is about 15 to 30 minutes where we wrap our heads around where we actually are and what's coming up next so that we can be prepared. One reason we're often stressed and scrambling is that we're flying by the seat of our pants not looking up and assessing where we actually are and what's about to happen. Events and responsibilities catch us off guard. We assume we can do more than we reasonably can, or we neglect to assess how much time we actually have or how much time our distraction of choice is actually stealing from us. A weekly review is a mini pause at the end of a week's worth of work where we get perspective and mentally prepare for the next round. 
Instead of scrambling hither and thither, we're effectively and intentionally directing our attention and our efforts where we know it matters. When we do that, we aren't really stressed by what didn't happen. But we can only get that kind of perspective and be aware of what truly matters right now in our lives if we pause and think about it regularly. A weekly review habit gives you that perspective because it's time reserved to gain perspective in the midst of a busy life. The busyness isn't a problem. The lack of mental preparation is the problem. You can find more links in the description for details about what's involved in a weekly review. But the important thing is to reserve 15 or 30 minutes on Friday or Saturday to stop, look back over your week and see if you need to collect something that you missed. Look at your calendar for the coming week or a few weeks and then write some notes to self so that you're ready to go and mentally prepared for the week to come so that you can run without tripping in those good works. Our time is something we can intentionally and effectively invest for the good of our people and the glory of God. Tomorrow I'll have step five of skillful homemaking. So stay tuned and go back and catch any previous episodes you might have missed in this short, fun series. You can dig deeper by getting my book, Simplified Organization, Learn to Love What Must Be Done. It's on Amazon and Audible. Yes, read by me and develops all six skills with a lot of encouragement along the way. Make 2024 your year of embracing cheerful, competent homemaking. One way you can do that is by taking my six module mini course, Learn to Love What Must Be Done. It has step-by-step lessons and action steps walking you through these six steps so you can apply them to your own situation. And remember to repent, rejoice, repeat.